G'day everyone and welcome back to the Aaron Engineering Channel. So today I'll be uh, machining these car slugs and these will form the cylinders for the little SV engine build. I thought the uh, title of the video was befitting, holding carbide tips and ripping cast iron chips. Now currently here I'm just doing some facing operations, some parallel turning. You'll notice I won't bore you with the entire uh, length of that 80 millimeter or 70, 75 millimeter length of machining and I'll skip through it you'll see it I'll be taking different cuts now here we go we're coming up the backside with this with the center drill with the sut and the center drill and the whole idea of this operation one is to prepare the slug so I can flip it for op two so this is just roughing it out so the OD was turned down to 75 mil which allows me another five mil on the flip um, you'll see the drill bit here wobbling a little bit. I'm not too worried about it being uh, not concentric because I'm going to put a boring bar up its backside. So there's a half inch drill bit going in there. And here we go now with a 13 16, or oh, sorry, 15 16 drill bit. Now I've got the camera magnetically attached to my tailstock here, so I'm sorry if the footage is shaking around a little bit. Okay, I've flipped the cast now in the three-jaw chuck, and this is op two, and this is where I'll be doing the majority of the machining. So all the facing, parallel turning, and boring, so everything's concentric. And once again, I'm skipping through that facing cycle. You'll see that I'll jump here again, and you'll see I'm taking a three passes there to get clean that face up. There was a slight little blemish still on the corner, but I wasn't worried about that. Okay, here we go now. We're going to turn that down to size, and that size I need to hit there is 70 millimeters. However, this is not um, critical because it's just an outside diameter; it doesn't do anything uh, apart from form the outside edges of the cooling fins. What I've got to do here is face that uh, to a diameter of 40 mil. You'll see it one mil deep, and the outside diameter there will be 40. Right, popping in with my little pal bit boring bar. Uh, this is the boring bar you see me highlight this earlier from uh, Arthur at Live Tools, uh, pal bit. Uh, the insert on that, I can't believe how long it's lasted to be honest with you. I made four of these. And plus I used that also on the um, the flywheels as well. And I think I've only turned the insert around once. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's very long lasting. Now a little bit of pucker factor here. I, I did have a f fair bit of boring bar stick out to go all the way up there. The overall length of that cylinder needs to be 64 mil. I think I got it down to about 67. But I had to go right up and kiss it nearly. Right, here's the grooving now. These are for the cooling fins on the cylinder. And I'm running the video quite fast here at eight times because I didn't want to bore you. Now you'll notice on each pass that I've vacuumed the bed of the lathe. Uh, machining casts, it's horrible stuff. It's full of graphite. It, it pretty much turns the valve grinding pace. It gets in everywhere. Uh, it gets in under the saddle gets in my jocks, gets in my feet, between my toes, and I'm still pushing it out of my nose three days later. Righto, so you watch here, I'll sped that footage up to ten times here. And uh, I think sometimes fast forwarding looks cool. I'm not sure if you guys like it or not, but it, um, it's a fair bit of editing work, but I think it flows better with the video. We've got one more facing cut here. And what I'll do here now, I'll auto feed and parallel turn that down to 40 millimeters as well. Beautiful. Up we come here with my file. And yes, I'm wearing gloves. And yes, I know you shouldn't wear gloves. But you know what? If I get caught up, that's um, my stupid fault. You'll notice my left foot's right near the e-stop down on the ground. So I was sick of getting cast everywhere. and <clears throat> yeah. So it was the gloves for me. I'll flip that around now to the other side. So this is operation three. So I'm going to part this off here. Now, a mistake I made here was that I had the feed per rev too slow. 
Um, on all the other parting operations, I had the feed per rev up around 0.8 millimetres per revolution, and this went back down to 0.4 because you will saw the previous operation was that auto feeding on that with the uh, parting tool. This has been a brilliant parting tool. Um, it's a very old Seco SECO one. Uh, my friend from Austria gave it to me. I used to work with him when I was a maintenance fitter at Dreamworld on the Gold Coast. And uh, it's a beautiful little jigger. And I bought the holder off uh, Arthur at Live Tools. And of course, the Dorian tool post just makes everything so much nicer. Right, oh, you know, I go here, I'm going to catch that parting off, that piece I've parted off. There we go. Right, oh, you've seen that I've done another facing operation there and I forgot to press record. But I've set that boring bar up on a 15 degree angle here to do a chamfer. Now the whole idea of the chamfer on the bottom of the cylinder is to allow uh, a little bit easier for when you're installing the piston with the rings on it. And will sort of help you go in. Or should, should I say help guide the piston and collapse the rings in so you can get it in. Now I do have a little bit of chatter here on the boring bar. And that's because I've got too much stick out. Uh, I left it long because I was making four of these and I was finishing one at a time. And you'll see in my last pass I'll pull out. Always best to pull out, isn't it? And there we have it. Right now, so I'm over on the mill here at the moment and this will be another video. Um, I've got some other stuff to show you. And uh, there's it on my little motor and not bolted down. It's just spinning over with the Conrod running up and down inside there. Look, thank you very much. See you on the next video.